You ask, we answer. We're checking in once again this morning with UConn's Dr. David Bannock. Yeah, we've been checking in with him a lot. Uh, happy to chat with him again. And this time, uh, Doctor, we want to talk about variants. Uh, we've talked a lot about this more contagious UK variant, but now there's a South African variant of the coronavirus. Doctor, good morning. W what do we know and what do we still need to figure out about that one? So what we're learning is that there's a, um, a variant of uh, SARS-CoV-2 um, that seems to have originated in South Africa um, and has spread to other parts of that region um, that has um, it appears to be more uh, contagious, more transmissible than um, the normal wild type um, uh, SARS-CoV-2 that uh, we've seen thus far. Um, you know, I think I think we're still learning about the true impact. How much more transmissible is it, and how does it impact um, our ability to use things like uh, treatments, therapeutics, as well as the impact on vaccination? Being discovered, and how many more do you think will be discovered in the coming weeks and months? So, you know, I think, um, you know, we're, we're really in the early stages of learning about these variants. Um, and, uh, you know, our goal is to really stop them from uh, spreading as much as possible. You know, we've seen um, only a handful of um, these novel variants from other uh, parts of the world identified here in the U.S. You know, our ability to ramp up and be able to detect these is really escalating. And, you know, I think as we um, uh, increase our ability to detect these using um, genomic uh, sequencing, uh, we'll be, we will detect others um, here in the United States. How were these specific cases found through the genomic testing? I mean, were we just randomly taking samples from across the state, or was there some reason to worry uh, in these particular cases ahead of time? So for some of these variants, um, there are some... Uh some signs from some of the uh, standard testing we do, that PCR testing, um, using some of the platforms that can indicate this might be a variant. Um, and uh, that's how we've been able to identify a lot of the UK um, variants that have been uh, seen here in the US is some uh, some specific findings on the PCR testing. Uh, but in addition, um, you know, state health departments and the CDC uh, do sample um, uh, the positive tests uh, and those uh, strains get sent for further testing um, in somewhat of a surveillance um, method using kind of a random sample of all the positive tests um, in the region. So uh, we're doing both. We're looking for specific signatures on some of the PCR tests that we use in clinical practice to identify these, but also doing that uh, more widespread surveillance to, um, to find some of these variants. And how are the variants holding up to the vaccines? Are they holding up against the vaccines? Or is it just maybe too soon, too early to tell, to know for sure? So I think, you know, that's a really important question and one that, uh, you know, we still have to learn quite a bit about. Um, you know, we've seen in some of the uh, laboratory studies um, where they've looked at um, taking blood from people who have been vaccinated, um, they, with uh, especially with the mRNA vaccines, there seems to be activity um, in the blood, those antibodies that um, pr that are um, active against the um, these uh, variant strains. Um, but, uh, you know, we need to look a little bit closer to see if that um, activity is diminished. You know, it's important to remember that these vaccines induce protection. They, they uh, create that protection through what we call polyclonal um, targeting. So they can target multiple different parts of the virus. So if there's a little bit of change on one, that doesn't necessarily mean that the vaccine is going to be ineffective. But we have to look closer to see if there's multiple mutations that may make uh, vaccines a little bit less effective, but still um, you know, a lot to learn in this area. Okay, Dr. Bannock, that means we're going to have you back on the show a lot more often because there's an increasing amount of things to talk about. More Thank questions. you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Happy to help.